is our new stuff working? That is something we will hopefully find out really soon. But it does smell a little bit, so I'm not sure yet. We'll see. One thing we learned along the way is that you shouldn't put really boiling water into the French press because then the glass will break. You have to wait a little bit until it stops boiling but it's still very hot. Which one do you want, Nick? The winky one. This one? No, the other one. Yeah, the, uh, this one. <laughs> Drinkable. Most of all, it tastes professional. Ooh. Remember the time when we had to make a whole construction to make coffee? <laughs> yep. Next on the menu is a very fresh smoothie with this very new smoothie machine, like blender. You look like a guy who's selling stuff on the television. <laughs> <laughs> I think we need more, a little bit more water, no? Nope. Let's go, let's go. There it is. One fresh smoothie in only 30 seconds. If you want to buy one of these, call 100 Smoothie. <laughs> <laughs> We had our caffeine, we had our vitamins. This may sound like a perfect start of the day, but it's not completely how we planned it. In our last video, we expressed how we dreamt this day to be. And if everything goes well, in our next video, we will be talking to you from a nature's campsite in France with a glass of champagne in our hands. Mm -hmm. The good news is that we are on a nature's campsite. The bad news is that we don't have champagne. So how are we gonna fix this? I'm gonna go out and buy champagne. Super easy. Poof. By the way, you look really tall <laughs> today. It's because I've grown the last couple of days. Or maybe it's because your <laughs> chair is much higher than mine. Uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, we are at a very, very nice naturist campsite. It's called Le Club Soleil de Troyes. Mm -hmm. And we will show you around and show you everything, but later in this video, because we have priorities. Yes, champagne. First, we have to go <laughs> find champagne. French Champagne has a really interesting history, so I will give you a little bit of background. And it all starts with the geographics. Basically, you can divide the French Champagne region into two parts. The north part, around the area of Epernay and Reims, and the southern part, around the area of Troyes. In the north, you will find all the big Champagne houses, like Moet, Chandon, Perrier, Boiselle. And here in the south, there are much smaller houses. And this, regi this region has also been known as uh, the second-rate Champagne zone. And this has caused a lot of problems in the past. Like in the beginning of the 19th century, the big houses from the south tried to deprive this region from the official Champagne region. And as a, pro as a result, the farmers started to protest. There have been strikes, but they also started to adapt their procedures and their recipes to make different kinds of champagne. They started using different grapes, different soil. So the champagne in the south is today is much different than the very traditional champagne that you will find in the north. And as a result, the champagne here is actually becoming much more appreciated and popular, which is really interesting. And of course, modern people as we are, we chose this region with the modern champagne as the region to go to. No, that's, that's, not really, that's not really true. <laughs> in fact, there's only one nature's camp, campsite in the whole Champagne region, and that is, happens to be here in the south, and that is why we came here. But I am really interested in what Champagne they're selling here, so... And, and I'm also interested in the taste, if it's really different, um, because we have to try it. Yep. There's only one way to find there's out. There's only one way to find out. Opposite Ferme. Ah, for toute la semaine. Okay, no problem. Merci. Au revoir. Oh, it's dommage. Closed. <laughs> we have to find another one. This is a pity because this place was really recommended to us by one of our followers. 
But yeah, but it's closed, it's closed. And luckily we had another tip. So let's find the other place. And fingers crossed that, fingers this, one, crossed. that this one will be open. <laughs> These are the grapes that are being used to create one of the most exclusive beverages in the world. Do you think that it's okay if I visit a champagne house in flip-flops? You should visit a champagne house in flip-flops. That's what we do. That's yeah. who we are. And we are famous. We can yes. do whatever we want. <laughs> This place is a tip that we received from Karin and Emil, who are two followers from the first minute, I think. So, let's hope that it's open. Go. Opa! <laughs> <laughs> Music! Merci. Allez, montez. Montez. Mm. 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 Très bon. Oui. Pour qui vous me donnez deux bouteilles de celui? Le cube de prestige. Oui, et une bouteille de celui. So old. <laughs> Look at the box. <laughs> what do you have? It's, it's a really big box, Ooh. but I, I promise you it's only three, but we only ordered three bottles. <laughs> it's just a big box. Another difference between the north and the south region of the Champagne is the tasting experience. If you go to the big houses in Epernay or in Rennes, then you will have the whole tour of the property and you have to pay quite a lot of money probably to taste uh, champagnes. And here in the south, the tasting is free most of the time, but it's also very basic. Like you arrive and they ask you, what do you want to taste? You just pick one or two or three or five, maybe, maybe 10, I don't know, we never tried champagnes and then they just let you taste it but it's that's the goal that you buy something you can't just i don't feel like you can leave without buying anything no no it's true and also man, the thing is if you don't like it you don't buy it obviously but we liked it so we, we bought it <laughs> we like we like every champagne basically but before we go back to the campsite to get drunk like the rich people <laughs> I, I, on flip-flops on flip-flops i think we have to visit the capital of the south of champagne yes region. definitely the whole city center of troyes is in this same typical style and that is because there was a huge fire back in the 15th century that burned down the whole city so they could completely rebuild it at once and maintain one specific style. And that is not even the only fun fact I know about Tra. Is this the real reason why we are here? Let's say it's one of the reasons. <laughs> fun fact number two, the shape of the town center is in the form of a champagne cork, which is really interesting because by the time it was shaped, the town was shaped, the champagne cork wasn't invented yet. So it's pure coincidence. This street here is called the Ruelle des Chats, the cat street. And they call it this way because the walls are so close to each other that the cats can really jump from one balcony to another. How cool would that be if an actual cat just jumps? For the video, that would be awesome. <laughs> there are pigeons, there are a lot of pigeons, so I don't think there's a lot of cats anymore. And yet another fun fact. Oh la la. I'm not really sure if it's an actual fact, but I'm gonna tell you anyway. The Cathedral of Troyes is said to be one of the most beautiful ones in all of Europe. But I gotta say, like the outside, it looks really nice, but 
I don't have the feeling that it looks better than most other cathedrals in Europe. So maybe it's in the inside. Let's check it out. <laughs> what do you think? It's a cathedral, though. Oh, it looks really nice. I gotta say, the cathedral is really nice and especially the glassworks look very impressive. Is this one of the most beautiful cathedrals in all of Europe? I think that's mostly a personal opinion. But I thought it was nice. And it was nice and cool inside. Yeah, and nice it was nice and fresh. It was cool inside. <laughs> and that's pretty much all of the fun facts I have. Maybe, maybe I can still throw in a weather update. Yes, please do. Today is most beautiful and sunny. And actually, this is the kind of weather where I would l prefer to stay at a naturist campsite than in a city. With but, a glass of champagne? With a glass of champagne. <laughs> but there is one more place I would want to visit here. I read somewhere that there is a shop in Troyes that sh focuses on champagnes that are both ecologically produced and very reasonably priced. That is like music in my ears. Those are <laughs> both characteristics that yes. we can very much enjoy. Absolutely. They are on holiday. Oh, <laughs> but it looks really cozy inside. Yep. I, see, I see big champagne bottles for only 31 euros. <laughs> <laughs> but they are closed. Yes, it's they're a, closed. Basically the story of today. Yes, it's the story of today. Yeah. We have to find another one that we have three uh, in a row. It's a lesson is, learned. It, is it good luck then? It's not just us who go on holiday in the summer. <laughs> no, nope, not only us. <laughs> Luckily apparently. we already have bought champagne. Yay. <laughs> Let's go Let's drink go. it. Yes. Back to the campsite. Back to the campsite. Yeah, that's right. We are still not <laughs> drinking champagne. Yeah, this is also good. <laughs> it's from the same grapes, no? No, I don't think so. <laughs> okay, there anyway. Was, there was one thing we didn't take into account, is, and that is that it's going to take a while before we can get a bottle of champagne cold. So I guess that champagne will be for tomorrow. Yeah. And tomorrow we will also show you around this beautiful campsite. Cheers. That is correct. We are drinking champagne for breakfast. Because we can, and because we waited for so long for this moment. And oh yeah, by the way, don't mind the glasses, they're not the fancy champagne glasses, but we got them for free. Thank you, mom. <laughs> <laughs> because, to be honest, we have to save on something if we want to drink this delicious, expensive booze in the morning. <laughs> Cheers, right? Cheers. <laughs> but this is really the picture that we had in mind. We are talking to you from a naturist campsite while drinking champagne. I, wa yeah. I wonder if we just invented a new kind of glamping. Ooh. Because we, we sleep in a regular tent and not mm. in one of the big fancy tents. But of course, we are drinking champagne. That's right, <laughs> and it tastes so good. Mm. And, and another reason why we can drink champagne in the morning is because today we're not going anywhere. It's going to be ridiculously hot, so we don't want to wear any clothes. So instead, we're just going to stay on the campsite. We will show you around. But first, we're going to finish this. We did finish the whole bottle of champagne, so I can't really promise that my speech will be very understandable. Are we giving speeches <laughs> now on YouTube? <laughs> but that's no problem, we can still put subtitles and editing if it's necessary. That's true. So we are at Le Club du Soleil de Troyes. It's a mouthful and basically it means the Sun Club of Troyes. And the name Sun Club comes from the, the old philosophy of naturism, when it was all about getting your skin exposed to the sun as much as possible. That was obviously before they recognized that uh, skin, scan skin cancer is a thing. But the, still, the name is still popular in France and I guess in other countries as well. But it's, it's a typical naturist club. It's a, beautiful, it's a beautiful place. And like right now we are walking next to a, a lake, a very green lake. I wouldn't really swim in this and it's also not allowed. But there is a small boat and a, a surfboard. It's just mostly a really green space and I like it. It's surrounded by trees. It's really, really nice. This brings us to the central area. There is a playground 
And then there's also a bar and a swimming pool, but at the moment there are way too many people, so we can't film this. So, let's turn back. Are you coming? Okay, change of plans. <laughs> Everybody just left the swimming pool. Maybe it's because they saw the camera, but we do get the chance to get some shots here. This brings us to the pitches. There are several fields with camping pitches. And we are arriving at the, the field where our pitch is, but here we really, really can't film. The reason why there's nobody in the bar or in the swimming pool is because everybody's eating next to their accommodation. But we can show you our own pitch. This is where we live, where we have been living for the last couple of days. How about you give a tour of the tent? Uh, do you know how hot it is inside? It's like, I don't know, 60 degrees or something. <laughs> yeah, that's no. right. Not gonna give a tour in the tent. <laughs> Maybe we have to keep this for for another time, Definitely. for another video. <laughs> you see, we even had to put our fridge outside in the shade because when it's in the tent, it doesn't even cool anymore. This was a really short tour of the campsite. It's kind of hard to film here with all those people. But I hope that you got an idea of what it looks like. And of course, we still have to show you the very best thing of this campsite. At the very end of the campsite, there is a gate that leads to a, a short hiking trail. I'm not gonna tell you where the hiking trail goes to, because we've already been here yesterday, but we want to keep the surprise because it's so really, really beautiful. I can already see it and I'm not gonna keep you waiting. Look at this. There are some people on the beach on this side, so I saw a little beach on the other side, so we're gonna try and cross the river. Good luck. Let's see. <laughs> How beautiful is this place? It looks a bit like a, like a jungle river in Latin America. And the funny thing is that this is actually the Seine River. This is the exact same river that runs all the way through Paris. So I'm not really sure how the direction of the water, but I guess that there's like 50% chance if we pee in the water here, that it will be in Paris at some point. What do you think? Should we pee in the water? I just did. <laughs> <laughs> To give you an idea of how hot it is today, it's the kind of hot when even I go into the water. Say what? Oh, it's, still, it's still really cold. And there is a strong curve. The Club du Soleil de Troyes is by definition a naturist club, so it's not a commercial campsite and the whole place is run uniquely by volunteers. And I gotta say, we have double experiences with naturist clubs. Some can be really old fashioned or really run down, but others can be really nice. And like this one. I think we can put this one in the second category. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. And everything is super, super clean. So the volunteers are doing an amazing job. Uh, yeah, it's a clean place. Yes, it's a very yes. relaxed place. They yeah. have facilities. The staff is super friendly. Yeah, the, we feel welcome. Yeah, yes. definitely. Yeah. And of course, there's this access to the river, which is, yeah, uh, there's just nothing better than yeah. being naked in nature. No, absolutely. So we are gonna enjoy the rest of this very hot day here in the river. And, and that is literally because Nick went in the water. <laughs> oh my God, I can't believe it. It's good that we have it on tape because otherwise nobody will ever <laughs> believe it. It's like the octopus thing. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, our trip in France will continue. So if you don't want to miss that. You know what to do, subscribe to our channel, put on your notifications, give us a big fat thumbs up and we see you next week. Bye. Bye. -bye.